All right, welcome everyone to Power BI for Government Community of Practice number nine. Fantastic to have you here with us today. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start, do ask that you just uh, remain on mute. If you have any questions, please just drop them in the chat. Um, if you have a question that maybe is a little bit more complicated, you'd like to ask the question to the presenter, uh, just put your raise hand symbol as well. Um, but uh, also, just a reminder that this session will be recorded. So there's a few people who couldn't make the session today. I'm going to record the session. I will put it on my uh, Datatel YouTube channel um, and I'll, I'll send everyone a link so you can come back to it at another time. And also all the other sessions are recorded there as well if you want to go back and watch any of the other eight sessions. For those of you who haven't been to the Power BI for Government community of practice before, uh, welcome. This is a group where we come to see user stories, um, get Power BI trips, tips and techniques and learn a few things uh, and also try to keep up to date with what is happening in the world of Power BI. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world of Power BI right at the moment and so what I want to do is kind of inform you and keep you up to date in those things as well. Now, there is a LinkedIn group. Um, generally, I'm posting things in there about uh, when the next community of practice is coming up. Um, also, there's a lot of job opportunities. People send me job opportunities, so I put them up there as well. So if you haven't um, joined the group, I'll drop that in the chat again for those who've come late. Um, please join the, the LinkedIn group. Um, also in the chat, you can register for the August session as well. For those I haven't met, my name is Warren Dean. Um, so my business, which is just me, which is Datatail, uh, we work with Power BI in the government sector. Uh, we do a lot of Power BI training, build Power BI reports, um, and Power BI rollout is a, a new-ish service that I've got uh, in terms of how do we make sure Power BI is being used well across the whole enterprise. Um, so we break that down into the different technologies that you're gonna leverage, the practices that you're going to use within the organization, and how do you set the organizational culture? So if you're interested to know uh, in terms of this package, you can see all the deliverables that we have there in terms of um, there's a different charts, tenant settings, AD groups, Power BI templates with style guides, all that type of stuff. Um, do let me know. Um, that's a package that we've offered and, and the feedback that we've been getting is really good. Um, so if you're interested in making sure that Power BI is being used well across the enterprise, please do get in touch. But for today's session, here we have Power BI for Government. Just want to thank Christian, Mercer and Carter. Really appreciate you spending your time putting together the slides and the Power BI reports. Really interested to learn from what you guys have been building in the world of Power BI. In August, uh, we do have Scott. Um, Scott was a Victorian. He's, he's over in WA now. Um, he's going to showcase crime and crash stats reports in Power BI. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a training session. I'm going to show you how to connect to the uh, the BOMS API. So you can build out a little, um, you know, next seven days of weather and put that in your Power BI report. So I'll be showing you how to do that in August. And we still have a session open. So if anyone else would like to present, just shoot me an email after today um, and I'll, I'll add you into the schedule. Love to see what you're doing in the world of Power BI. So in terms of the quarterly wrap, what is new in Power BI? Um, and hopefully you've seen this one, but it is Microsoft Fabric. This is the, the new buzz. Uh, Microsoft Fabric is essentially a unified analytics platform. Um, now for us, we, you know, we kind of lived in Power BI world, or me personally, I lived in Power BI world. There's now all these other products that are available to me you know, via the browser, and I'll show you how you can access them now. But essentially it's it's one platform to rule them all. So we've still got Power BI there, uh, but we've now got Synapse with data engineering, data science, data models there that we can access. We can build a data warehouse all within that browser. Data Factory is there as well. And how this all kind of sits together in terms of one storage place, which is referred to as One Lake. So it is a it's a multi-cloud, uh, but what's good about it is it's the unified place for all these products to store their data. Um, so easy data discovery, uh, one security layer across the whole platform. 
Uh, but enough of that. Let me jump into Power BI and show you. So you won't see this um, unless your admin has turned it on for you, which they most likely haven't. Uh, but for me down the bottom, you can see I've got this little Power BI icon. And if I click on that, I have all these other options here uh, for other products I could use. So I've got Power BI as Data Factory, and within Synapse, we have the four products as well. So I'll just click on this Microsoft Fabric link here. Um, and so these are all the products that are available to you. Uh, if we had a look at, let's say, uh, data science, uh, you can see here there is some really good blogs. So there's a lot of reading material, you know, getting started with Jupyter Notebooks, getting started with machine learning models. Um, there's samples in here that you can build. So um, it is all here. It's all it's all still in preview. Uh, but if we went to, you know, data warehouse, you can see here I could build a sample warehouse. Um, I can build a pipeline. So oh, some people can't see the screen. Let me, sorry, let me share my screen again. Share screen, hopefully that fixes it for you. So again, it's in the bottom left. In here, it will need to be turned on in the admin center. Uh, if you haven't seen the admin center before, um, it's up in here, uh, admin portal. And it's this top one here. So this will need to be turned on. But obviously, there's a lot of considerations. You don't really want to turn this on and, and enable that for the whole organization. Maybe just for a few people to have a play around to see what's available in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, now, Microsoft Fabric is not free. It's I don't think it's definitely not covered with Pro or your premium licenses. Uh, you are charged based on your the compute you provision and the amount of storage that you use. So the cheapest um, level that you could get would be 260 American dollars, I think that is. But um, this is all quite new. Uh, people still getting their heads around it. So if you're working in the world of Power BI, nothing changes for you. Uh, but if you're looking at building out a new product or a new Power BI report, you might want to look at some of the suite in there and see if you can leverage some of those tools when you're building out a new Power BI report. Quick measures, suggestion with Copilot. Um, you know, you would have seen chat GPT is, is all the buzz. It's it's getting into all the products now. Um, it's also now within Power BI. This is another one you do need to turn on in your tenant. Uh, but let me give you a quick demo of how you can use quick measure. So if you've used it before, you had the calculations, so the pre-built calculations. Now we can write text. So let me jump into Power BI Desktop. So I'm in Power BI Desktop. Um, you can see here I've already written some text and it's written the code for me. Um, let's do another one. So I'll get rid of that. So sum of revenue where uh, I think we have a column called scenario where scenario equals talking marks goes text a C. And then I can generate that. So it's looking at the text, converting it into DAX. And here we have the value. Uh, we have the DAX code here. So it's created a calculate. Um, not sure why it's using keep filters. It could have just used filters, but anyway, there's, there's the code there. And then I can go and add this. And I get my measure here. I can rename this. I'll just leave it for the sake of in here. Just clash that make it appear at the top. And I can add my measure in here. So there's my measure by business unit. I can see my revenue uh, filtered on if the sales scenario equals AC. Um, so yeah, question. This is not turned on via the desktop app. Uh, this, again, is another one. Let me show you within the admin portal. Uh, if we go down here in the admin portal. Do, 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 do. So, quick measure suggestions. So under this one, you'll need to actually turn on both of these to get it to work. So allow that to work and that one. Um, if you turn both of those on, uh, you will be able to use this this new feature. Uh, just a reminder, it's in preview, and obviously they will be um, 
improving it and expanding it based on feedback. So that's suggestions with Copilot. New card visual. This this one's very cool. Um, if ever you've played with cards before and you know you had to make four or five cards and then you'd use the format paintbrush to make them all look exactly the same format. Uh, if you wanted to use some icons, you'd kind of place them on top. So you can see here in example one, there's a whole heap of things going on here, which is a whole heap of different um, elements. With the new card, uh, it's very streamlined, and you will see here there's only one element to do everything here. So let me give you a quick demo of it. Um, this one is a preview feature, but if you're on the June Power BI desktop, um, it should already be there for you. So uh, if you go into the file, Options and settings, options, preview features, uh, right down the bottom, new card visual. Now, if you're in June, this should already be turned on for you. Uh, also, while we're here, I'll mention this one because I'm talking about it a little bit later. This is Power BI Project. So that's another option that you can turn on as well. Oops, there you go. So here we have a new card. So here I've got um, a report and you can see up the top here, I have a card. Um, it's actually got, let me close that, four measures in it. Um, so previously with the old card, you could only have one thing. This one has four. We can put all the elements in there. I'll show you some of the settings in here and call out. Um, so you can each, of the four cards could have, actually, you can see I've already done it. Um, this one's millions, this one's millions, and this one's just the, the raw number. So you can set that up in here. Um, you can put uh, images, choose, there's so many settings, oh, the image down here. So in here, I can insert an image, which is this, um, and you can do a different image, obviously, for each card. Uh, if up in here you have, so apply these settings and you can see I have my four measures. So you can do a lot of interesting things in here. Uh, you can obviously have different shapes for the cards. Uh, this is called an ascent. So you can have a little separator, different colors, icons, um, different fonts and different formats for each individual card. And it's all just within the one visual. So eventually this will replace uh, the card, this one, and it'll also replace a multi-card because you don't really need a multi-card now because you can see here I have four in the same. So eventually these two will disappear and we'll just have this new card function. So this is really cool. Um, you can see here it adds a lot of, quite a lot of effort. Um, Report tool tips work on it, drill throughs work on it. Um, so a lot of extra features here. Um, so yes, yeah, just to mention that from Brendan, definitely gonna improve report performance because for me to do this previously, that would have taken like 10 or 12 elements. Now it's just one. So yeah, very cool. So that's the new card visual. Edit data models in the Power BI service. So this one is quite handy. Um, if we go into, here's a, actually, no, we'll go back in here, go back to Power BI. I'm just going to open up a Google, my Google Analytics report. Once this loads with the options at the top, once I click edit in here, you'll see there is now open data model is available to you. Um, again, this is something you need to turn on the tenant, but once I click on open data model, instead of, you know, downloading the Power BI desktop file and having to look and, and then look at the data model, I can now view the model in the service. So that's great. That'll, that'll save me a bit of time when I want to quickly have a look at a data model. You can edit it as well. So if I wanted to delete that, um, I can delete that relationship, um, change a relationship. So you can edit the data model as well. So. Developer mode. So this is in preview at the moment. Um, what this allows you to do is get some additional information about your Power BI reports. So it allows you to do source control with Git. Um, it allows you to do CI/CD. 
There's you can look at it as a, within a text editor. Um, so it's kind of makes it as a project file that you can then use for source control um, to manage your projects. Now to use this, um, you'll see I've turned it on before. When I go file save as down the bottom here, I now have three options. So I have my Power BI file, the template file, but I also have PBIP. So you'll have all of that now. Um, you can save those PBIP files. You can integrate that with Git. I do think it requires a premium license. Um, hopefully one day it won't, but this is all in preview. So talking about you know, how do we have version control of Power BI, this is what we're trying to address with this one. Embedded visuals from Power BI organizational apps. So I've shown you before how you can take a Power BI report and embed the whole Power BI report in PowerPoint. But here you can see I've just taken one particular visual. So I'm, I'm in PowerPoint, I'm doing a presentation and I can talk to the presentation and I can click to highlight things. So I just can take one visual now. So you don't have to take the whole Power BI report. You can just embed one particular visual in there. So let me show you how to do that. Um, so here I'm in, I'm in an app. Um, so I can look at one of the charts within the app. I can click the three dots and you can see here, when we go share, I can open it in PowerPoint. Um, and what you can do is you can just take this link you can click open in PowerPoint if you already existing, have an existing Power BI report, you can just copy this link. And then what I'm gonna do is, let me just stop presenting in PowerPoint. I'll just bring this back up. So if I delete that, no, I'm gonna delete it. All right, let's just create a new page, new slide. And here it says insert, here's the Power BI module. And then you paste the URL in here. And, and there it is. So that obviously you need to be logged in with the same account, but this is all here. So you don't have to take your whole Power BI report anymore. You can just take one particular element and put it in PowerPoint like so. All right. Um, I won't jump back into slide presentation, but that's that's the updates. So I did notice there was some questions going along. If they haven't been answered, I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce uh, Mercer to you. Um, and Mercer is going to be talking about admin usage metrics of Power BI. So Mercer, I'll hand over to you if you'd like to take over the screen. Oh, thanks, Warren. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Mersa. I'm a BI lead from the Salvation Army. I will share a bit of my background. I was part of data analytics team in different sectors, such as uh, local government, welfare organization, insurance company. My role as a BI lead is to help organization with their daily reporting tasks, uh, establish a consistent reporting infrastructure across the organization and help and uh, different business units to transform their data into actionable insights. Our business model in TSA follows hub and spoke approach, and we try to build capability and empower each team to create their own reports uh, through community of practice and training session. I will share my screen and start my presentation. Can you see my screen now? Uh, not yet. Yes, we can see it now. Yep, thanks. Okay, great. I'm going to talk about uh, Power BI usage metrics and what is this report and how this report helps me. It provides me get a great insight into the user adoption and displays activity KPIs that give us a clear a view of our capabilities and identify areas where we can improve in our organization. I wanted to create these reports because I had two main objectives. I wanted to build a business intelligence community of practice. Also, I wanted to uh, implement a consistent reporting platform across the organization. 
Before starting, I want to just talk about different type of usage metrics in Power BI service. What we have, uh, one of them is a uh, re um, report usage metrics. It's at the report level. If we click on the LSUs button in the um, Power BI service for each of our reports and choose uh, view usage metrics of the report, we will uh, see this report generates for us. And this report has different section and explains how our users consume the report. And it we can slice and dice by uh, distribution method, is workspace or shared, is um, platform by platform, is web or mobile. So we will see this report there. Also, we can just change this report and get a save as, get a copy of the report and save it into our workspace. And then we need to remove our uh, report level filter and it gives us all the data for our workspace. And we will see that uh, we can just um, monitor all the data of our reports and dashboards across the workspace. And there is another uh, there is another usage matrix which is called admin portal usage matrix. You need to have Power BI admin access. And if you click on the setting uh, in Power BI service under the admin portal, in one of the menus you will see this page. But again, it's not something that we can customize and we can build our own KPIs. It doesn't give us what we want. Uh, so I found that that I need to explore more and find out any other options to access to the data of um, Power BI service logs, which is part of Office 365 logs. So I found out another way, which is called REST API. I found out that I need to connect to Power BI REST API and uh, retrieve the audit logs. So uh, when I click on this link, which I shared in the um, I will share quickly in the chat. Uh, it will open up all the uh, just uh, REST APIs list for us. And uh, we need to click on the admin one. And after this, we will see the whole list of our uh, different activities and different uh, information that we can get from the Power BI REST API. Uh, if we click on one of them and, uh, oh, sorry. If you click on one of them without uh, running any codes, it will uh, bring up this page. And then uh, we can click on try it here. If you click on try it, it will give us this page. On the right side, we need to fill the relevant uh, uh, parameters. And then if you click on run, it, for, in this case, it gives us all the workspaces in our um, um, Power BI service. And uh, this middle box is the uh, token we generates, I think, every hour. It's a temporary token. And if you are going to create our reports and we want to set a refresh and just we want to refresh our report regularly, we need a permanent token. So for getting permanent token, we need to register our app in dev.pavia.com. And then after registering our app, there is some other configuration in Azure Active Directory, then it gives us the permanent token. Uh, once we successfully run this uh, web application, confirm that we have the access because we're running this, uh, for running this particular way of API, we need Power BI admin access, as I mentioned before. When we check on the web, we will go through Power Query, open the Power Query, and then uh, we click on the new source, choose web, and paste the URL from the previous page here into our URL section. Then we click on advanced and choose uh, advanced mode here. Then at the end of the page, we need to uh, choose uh, authorization at the end of the page and paste our token in the previous page here in the corresponding cell and then click on OK to retrieve our data. Uh, when we click on OK, it will retrieve the list of the records here. Then we turn it to the table, and it shows us all the columns for the workspace table. And um, if I open the advanced editor section for the workspace, um, I could uh, manipulate it and change it in relative path. I need, uh, because I don't need to go through 
all the tables, for example, for users, for data follow, for data set, and run this process again. So if I just manipulate this part and as you see here, and add this dollar sign expand equal to data set, data flow, for dashboard user, other endpoints, whatever you like to just do analysis on this one. So uh, I can easily uh, manipulate this one, update it, and then if I click on done, uh, I, I will get all the relevant columns for the uh, for creating my data model. I won't go through the data query steps more. So uh, this is the model that we need to create our reports and get our insights. Now I wanna just after just creating my data model, I created my KPIs. I wanna just share some of the examples uh, and the insights. I uh, I use this report and get this from this. Uh, to uh, improve our reporting process. Uh, I utilize this report to identify active users and active departments and send the invitation to them and ask them to join the community of practice. This is one of the opportunities I found out through running this report. Uh, addition of the identifying uh, engaged and active users, um, this report helped me to identify the improvement areas uh, in our organization, and I want to now share the examples of that. For example, I found out that uh, there are a lot of personal workspaces across our organization, and some people just uh, publishing their reports in their personal workspaces, which we need to change the process. I talk to them and ask them to migrate their reports to the shared workspace. And this one helped us to have a, a streamline our reporting process and ensure that all of us are on the same page. Another one that I get from this uh, report, I found out that most of our reports uh, are refreshing in during business hours, and I get the insight into peak and busy hours for our uh, data set refresh. Uh, this information helped me to distribute our reports more effectively and avoid uh, pushing too much workloads during business hours. And uh, by adjusting this report schedule, uh, we ensure that all the reports are available for our users without any disruption. Uh, another uh, thing that which was helpful to me, uh, there was an activity in Power BI service, edit reports and edit data set, which uh, I found out that there is this activity in the list of our activities. Uh, it's so common. So I've, uh, this is important that we're not editing reports through Power BI service. It's risky and leads to error. So I've, I thought that we need to have a proper process in place to update our reports and uh, ch uh, apply changes on the desktop version, then uh, publish our reports and always save the updated one in the proper place. And uh, last, I want to just say the outcome of this report for me. This report helped me to build a community of practice and create an efficient and standard approach on how to use Power BI across the organization. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Mercer. I didn't know you could you could see people editing the Power BI report in the service. Definitely don't want to yes. oh, yeah, talk to people who, who don't realize that they should be doing that via Power BI desktop. So yeah, yeah fantastic. Excellent. So if there's any questions, feel free to raise your hands or drop them in the chat. Uh, Simon does have a question. He says, let's say I have 10 Power BI published apps. Can I create a report that gathers all usage metrics from all 10 apps using the API and then provide the metrics in one place? And if you have a look, at, I will share the list of the REST APIs. If you have a look, there is, I think there is an app section as well. You need to just have Power BI admin access to run that REST API and get the, all the information for that one. Also, I will share the YouTube channel Power, uh, BI Elite. Uh, it has a very great videos on this one. It goes through the details of the Power Query steps and it's may helpful for, for you if you want to use yeah. it. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. If you can, yeah, drop that in the chat, that would be great. Any any other questions for Mercer? Yeah, all good. 
what what benefits did MRSA end up having in our organization? Did were you able to re- reduce like the time of reports loading? Like, w- what benefits did you see overall? Uh, we are at the earliest stages of using Power BI. So before I joined this organization, it's I found um, just you know when I joined, I found out that each department using this. Um, Power BI, but there isn't any standard, there isn't any consi- consistent way of using Power BI. And every team published their own reports, set their scheduled time in business hours because they think that they just using Power BI service. So when I talk to them, we could just, you know, after identifying those areas to um, just improve. So I try to, after that, uh, prepare the standard and just walk them through that, how they need to use Power BI across the organization. And they collaborate more effectively with their teammates when they publish their reports in the work, shared workspace rather than sharing their report in personal workspace. Uh, another well, question or comment, Mercer. Um, Andrew is just commending you on your community of practice. Um, any, any tips or, or tricks for other people looking to start up a community of practice? Um, if you want to build a community of practice in your organization, I think Warren is helping us in this process as well. It's a great opportunity. I think if you are a, if you are a BI lead and if you want to just uh, work the, the and have the same appro- approach as us, hub and spoke, it's great to empower people because when you have a community of practice every month, it's a platform to share your knowledge. Everybody just talk about their experiences. So in our community of practice, each session we have a presenter, one of the just um, community of practice members talk about their experience, something that we have here. So we have a small group in our organization. It's very beneficial. I just find, and now for example, I want to work on finance report. I know some finance people in my community of practice and they are working in Power BI. So it's a shortcut for me to understand all the KPIs and just get the, their knowledge. Right now. Yeah, brilliant. Excellent. Thank you, Mercer. Um, what we'll do is we'll move on to our next presentation now. So just like to welcome Carter from Montgomery Parks. Uh, he's going to be talking about leveraging Power BI to analyze a bird monitoring program. And I'll hand over to you, Carter. But my first question really is, is what time is it over there? So I'll, I'll let you take the screen. Yeah, good question. It's 10 p.m. Uh, but it's a good time for me, uh, not working, off work. <laughs> but um, so as you imagine, I do have to introduce myself a little bit more than normal, but because um, uh, I'm at LF over in the US. But thanks for the opportunity to present on this topic. Um, Natural Resources uh, Specialist and I uh, took two years to put this together. Um, it evolved and innovated over this time. And um, where I where I come from, as a data analyst is Montgomery Parks. Um, I got my start here and we we serve Montgomery County, Maryland. It is a we're part of a bi county organization with the neighboring Prince George's County um, where we serve a lot of people. Um, it's the largest county in Maryland um, in terms of population. Um, so we have a great responsibility to serve our constituents and we also have the greatest amount of land as a single owner um in the county as well with 93 square kilometers and i had to update everything to metric uh the past couple minutes to remembering australia um and also 434 kilometers of trails so with me being a data analyst over here um we got we got a lot of great projects in the parks department obviously um everything from asset management to human resources to natural resources and with me just being the one data analyst right now i end up touching all of these things and learning from a lot of these great programs but with the bird monitoring program this is like one of my favorites um it was one of the first dashboards to ever come out of the organization um my third um it started in 2021 um, so it was able to hit the ground running pretty quickly. Um, it wasn't something where we had a, in a like change of process um, to really over overcome. So um, with the natural resources staff being willing to try new things, which Power BI for us was, 
um, we will really uh, maximize this opportunity. So with this program, it relies heavily on um, volunteers. Uh, they're trained and tested because uh, they have to uh, be able to identify visually and some via sound uh, a great number of birds. And the whole reason that we do this is because the birds that we observe in these these areas on our parks, um, they're indicative of a lot of things. Birds are our indicator species. This helps us understand what's going on with the birds, but also more generally with the habitats overall. And because we manage this land um, and we make changes to it, um, not a lot, we preserve it, but we do manage things differently based on the, this information. Um, and it helps kind of confirm some of our biases in terms of what we're doing, but also perhaps adjust as we go. Um, this data, um, it's not completely live. Uh, the volunteers enter this stuff into um, Google Sheets. Um, that's where they're comfortable. And I'm delivered it annually. And I write, I have a Python script that'll upload that to our Arc uh, hosted data set on ArcGIS Online. And this is also where the the um, the volunteers are have a publicly accessible map to help them identify these survey sites so that they have the right locations um, when they're transcribing this information out in the field. Um, one of the things that we hope to do in the future is get this all live, but um, we're taking baby steps. It's hard to train people on entirely new tools. Everyone knows Excel or thus Google Sheets. Um, bring it back to the slides. So with the dashboard, I'm going to flip back and forth. There's a lot of interesting things that went on with this dashboard. It had many iterations. Um, the staff have invested greatly in the data that they have available. Um, and that has yielded quite a number of interesting things. So the, the standout, uh, some of the standouts that I find is that we're able to see quite a bit of information very quickly. What they what they did is they they classified each of the habitats that they observed these birds so that when they can cross reference the habitats that they expect the birds to be present, they expect the bird to be a forested habitat, an open habitat, or both. That's what the F, B, and O stand for on this visual right now. Um, and then they classified each of these habitats as well. So we're able to see very quickly that um, in our forested habitats, yes, you see more forested birds. Likewise, with our open, you see disproportionately more open birds and likewise a steady amount of both as well because they're kind of hybrid in that way. Um, and then What's one of the things that was a, a great um, investment by the staff is that they they developed this expansive lookup table on on the bird species. It has it has literally over 50 dimensions and the second field parameters came out. I was so quick to implement this feature where we could dynamically switch between um, these different dimensions and then visually show them on, on the map, on these charts, everywhere, because they're able to see a lot of interesting things like one of, I think it's interior forest obligates here. Um, and by the way, all of this natural resource information, it's, I have to credit the volu the, um, the staff on, I don't know any of this, <laughs> but, um, these interior forest obligates, they're a great indicator of the, the overall forest qualities because the interior forest is, as it, set, as, it, as it defines itself, the interior forest. And this is a habitat that's at risk in the mid-Atlantic region that we're at. So these are habitats that we want to especially protect as birds migrate um, in our region and perhaps um, res end up residing in Montgomery County. So we're able to see very quickly, like which ones have more, um, more interior first obligates present at each of these sites, thanks to this map here with these dynamic dimensions. Um, also, they 
they were able to group some of these dimensions together so that we can kind of demonstrate them in a tagged mechanism so to compare multiple different types of nesting birds all at once and see what is most present in certain areas so what's like you're able to see some interesting things like or not so interesting because it's kind of expected you see canopy nested birds in the forested area most commonly as compared to some of these other areas um so one of the things that i had just I had to we well we had to really navigate with all these dimensions is where to put this um this all these dimensions in terms of filtering because we don't only just want to be able to uh visualize this information we also want to be able to filter by it uh we implemented this um by just creating a dedicated page with all of these di these dimensions for uh staff and also volunteers to filter by and how this is done in kind of the background is in the report sync slicers is on through the whole dashboard um and with everything not um visible on every other page um you would think this would have a great impact on performance but we are we're not really talking about a lot of data here um so um you you can't really optimize to this you have to real optimized for the business case not necessarily for performance all the time because we're only talking about a few ten thousand records anyways um and i'll want to I'll, they're able to see quite a bit of things very quickly with this and we also have the uh field parameter set up for the dimensions that that are very important to them so let me reset it back because i like to open um the habitats visually you're able to see these distinct species or the observed species. These are just the sum of individuals is the number of birds. Um, the distinct species is, as it says, the distinct number of species, observed species and herd species. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but I'll read a quote really quick in terms of what this data really ends up meaning for our staff is that it may be an ob obvious observation, but up until this point, we had very limited survey information to validate that our management purposes were upholding and supporting the wildlife we we're aiming to protect. And without this dashboard, we had no mechanism to really get into this data and equip means. Um, let me go back to the slides real good again. So one of the evolutions that we had in this program, this is two years now and 2023 being the third, we haven't yet kind of finished the season yet, is in the second year, they had acoustic monitoring devices because they had limited volunteers the second year. So they were able to station these at survey sites that they were not able to consistently get represented by volunteers. And then um, some of the most committed volunteers were able to listen to the birds um, present at these areas and then classify them based on what species they are. Um, now this presented some problems of course in terms of the schema because as as you can see could have seen in the report one of the primary uh, metrics that we rely on is the number of individuals but the issue with the acoustic monitoring devices you don't know if it's three crows or ten or whatever species it is, it is. so what that ends up resulting in is some of the favorite things that we we get to see um as people that make reports is multiple fact tables um and this fact table really the only difference in it between the fact observations which is everything i just showed you and the fact heard or the fact that the observations they have a count of individuals and the fact heard do not um otherwise they're like pretty much set up identically in the report and what we did to kind of uh mix oil and water in this scenario let me get up the data view um we integrated them where applicable mostly just in terms of the distinct species um so i created a just an empty folder essentially and just put this distinct species there and of course you can see distinct species the same distinct species in both fact tables so you end up having to reduce uh, this potential duplicates by taking the union and then grouping by to get the unique count of each of those and the 
uh, unique values of each of those um, tables and then counting those rows. Um, and that's why we still have here in the report multi all these different ways of measuring feces because distinct species includes both. Observed only includes the ones that are, as it says, observed. And as you can see here with her, there's a lot less information here because this was only implemented for one year on a few select sites, but they're still able to navigate this as needed. This is not, this doesn't end up becoming lost data. It is, while it is apples to oranges, um, it still is valuable data. Um, and then this is probably my favorite part. I'm really happy to be sharing to a Power BI audience to get something like kind of this technical, um, but, DAX is your friend um, and also your your technical peers, um, your your conservation peers. If you're in local government, um, they're they they're very familiar with research statistics and Power BI is a great application for that to make the jobs easier um, because their words, not mine. They've saved out not hours, not days, but weeks of time with this and then with Power BI leveraging DAX, which is a completely um, dynamic way of calculating this information, they don't have to spend hours calculating stuff as they would have if not for Power BI for every single site and then every single park, which is like hundreds of times in Excel, which is where they would have done it. And then you're not even able to filter it. Um, you're not even able to play around and investigate. So they, what ends up now is it ends up being a black hole for them because they're able to investigate so far in terms of what they're able to see. And this is a kind of simple, this is a simple one. I, I was very explicit in terms of the variables just for readability's purposes, but um, this is the, the Margloves in, index like straight from academia. Um, where S is the distinct counts of species and N is the total sum of individuals. The Anybody who makes Power BI reports, these are familiar types of requests and metrics and could be easily quantified by, um, this is just a sum in the background and that's just a distinct count in the background here. Um, and then this, this divide is exactly uh, equivalent. And then, yeah, just not wanting to return a zero um, in the event that there is a blank um, return within the natural log. Um, this one, um, there's really, there's really for, probably very few things that Power BI, DAX can't really do. Um, and this mathematical notation, although complicated, um, it's still, there's still a Power BI equivalent to this. Um, this, this su summation here, where we're taking for each record of species, we're summing this and then taking that full sum and dividing one by that. Um, if, if you walk that through, um, that, that ends up building you this. The summation right here is logically equivalent to sum X. Um, so you're able to put this directly into the report because and have this, like I said, be dynamic simply because DAX being a mathematical um, formula based language is able to directly translate this um, because we take the sum X at the at the grain of the D dem species table so that it iterates through each I and then takes the power. Does this here and then sums it all and then divides the final result one by the final result. Um, and this was also iterative, like we had to go back and forth um, because like I was I was literally still learning these things. Um, this is probably this really forced me to learn DAX. Um, and what's what is really cool in here is, is your it it leverages the different contexts of row and the filter context so in here because in sum x this individual sum operates within the row context so you're able to get the sum of individuals lowercase n 
but then since the total sum of individuals uppercase n is already calculated within not within that row context you're able to reuse that and divide it all across um, when you're taking that iterative um, results here and to kind of wrap, wrap some other interesting things up that I, I find with this report is um, just generally a lot of a lot of dashboards um, there's the, the frequent request is just to view a lot of the raw data so they're able to navigate per, and see um, as as they need it each of these unique these observations that volunteers had and this is also where I think in many many places you're able to drill through and see the results um, just for these specific things that they drill through on um, which is a, a pretty big need um, in many cases and then also the species reference here which is basically just the lookup table that we had the dimension table for all the species with some some metrics thrown in um, with them with them being they invested a lot of time with the research that they put into it so they they de essentially documented that with citations within the report so that volunteers or consumers can read that when when they navigate to these because they had to make judgment calls on the habitats that these birds are supposed to be associated with um, of course educated judgment calls and that's why they had these citations here and they would quickly just scroll through if they're just be a common name or any of these things just find like some of their some of the things that they're looking for in terms of um, a unique species that maybe uh, a citizen has a question about or a volunteer has a question about or they're just trying to inquire about um, that's very rare or otherwise and they're also able to um, compare the habitat guild versus the survey dominant habitat um, this is a another measure here where it gets the most the dominant habitat that they're obser observed in and you're able to cross reference where of course some of these bills are is probably not not that uh interesting to see because you're you'd expect them to see in all of the above but once you get to the, like some of the forested it's interesting when you see a forested species like Kalman yellowthroat more most frequently at an open habitat and then we have a tool tip here to see where are these occurring most frequently and then they'd be able to dive farther into why that might be that might just be, be a phenomenon or there might be an actual reason um, and that's why they're continuing to collect data year to year to figure some of this stuff out um, and i think that is all i have um, is there any questions yeah Thank you. Yes, there's some questions in the chat. So Brendan would like to know, are you doing anything with you know, trends? So looking over time and identifying trends. Uh, not yet. They found that this this is their their words. They the grain in which they care about the the actual dates in which this stuff was observed was like year to year. And with this only being two years, it's just not a great enough of a sample size. But as we go with this third year, which is happening as we speak into future years, I think these year to year comparisons will become uh, the next evolution of this report because at a 10 year time frame, a five year time frame, even you might be able to see some differences in this behavior. Um, and they're just taking samples as well. So they're, they're being very mindful to not be too brash um, in terms of making these comparisons uh, too early too early yeah uh, on your overview page you're using a map there's just a few questions about is that azure is it being which which map is that great question because uh, all these maps in power bi are different right now it's the bing one um i know that's the azure is being a forced upgrade right now unfortunately the azure map it's a quick it's a that's a bug or something as a, uh, a, con a huge con in my mind currently is that it does allow you to have these pie chart visuals, which is the most 
valuable thing and a lot of the dashboards that mapping comes up in our organization and like right here you're able to see and quickly observe like okay this open area has more open birds versus this forested area has more forested this is very important to see on the map um unfortunately the azure maps for power bi only supports this for lo if you have the location parameter in terms of the the chart if you use latitude and longitude it does not cooperate with the, the pie chart slices, which is very a very odd thing to me, and I will be making the switch generally once they fix that. Um, I'm ex I expect that it's probably already a, a Power BI ideas submission. Yeah, brilliant. All right, excellent. Thanks, Kata. That was, that was really interesting. Um, great solution there. And as you mentioned, saving a hell of a lot of time um, for the staff and then providing you all these insights where you, we can cut it down as well. So thank you. Really appreciate your time for putting that together. Yeah. Um, now, I haven't answered all the questions. So if there are some more questions, just put them in the chat and, and Kata will have a look and he'll, he'll answer them for you. Thank you all. Thank you. So once again, do join our LinkedIn group. Um, you know, register to see uh, Christian's presentation in August. Um, the link is there in the chat for you. Uh, fortunately, you have to register. I can't just send you an invite, so you do have to register every time. Um, and this recording, I'll have it all sorted and up for you tomorrow. Um, I'll also put Mercer's links in the in the YouTube channel as well, um, and I'll send up a wrap up email as well. So, okay. thank you, everyone. Two really good presentations. Um, really excited to see how people are leveraging Power BI um, in terms of a bit of an enterprise solution and then also an individual solution as well. So thank you so much. Sorry we, we ran a little bit over time, but I do hope that we see you in August. Again, if you need any help with Power BI training, Power BI rollout, Power BI report development, do get in touch. But I do hope to see you again in August. Appreciate your time, everyone. See you next time.